Thank you for those very generous words. Um, welcome, everyone. Thanks for coming tonight. Uh, Ambassador Ponajab, thank you so much for uh, being our guest tonight. And thank you so much for what your nation has done for all of the countries in the region that uh, Hajj Qasem Soleimani um, fought for. And I always think of Hajj Qasem as a regional commander because while he was an Iranian commander, when he reported to his leader at the end of 2017 that they had defeated, the, the resistance forces had defeated all of the uh, forces of Daesh in the towns and cities of the region, he wasn't just reporting as an Iranian commander, he was reporting as a commander of the region. And that's why I think, and I hope I don't hurt anyone's feelings with this, that this reminds me of Hajj Qasim. The unity of the region, the countries of the region. There was an earlier version of this flag which had some yellow in it, but we thought, well, it's about nations, not so much about parties, okay? Sallu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. If we think of what the, the great Iranian nation has done for the people of Yemen alone, who else has been speaking for the people of Yemen? The only two countries in the world that recognize the revolutionary government are Syria and Iran at, at this stage, unfortunately. Um, similarly, the only two nations that support all the resistance factions in Palestine are Syria and Iran. The other countries they deal with the Palestinian Authority, mainly. So the support that Iran has given through its loyal servants like Hajj Qasem to all of the peoples of the region, um, you will know very well that the, the images of the two wonderful martyrs, who, by the way, whose legend is far more powerful since the murder, since the cowardly murder in Baghdad of these two men precisely because the character of both these two men as human beings is in such stark contrast to the cowardly murder and the way it was carried out in Baghdad. Invited, <coughs> pardon me, Hajj Qasim invited as a diplomat by the, the government of Iraq, by the president of Iraq, to be present in Baghdad when he was murdered. The contrast between the, the moral turpitude of the act of the Trump regime, and you know that Trump is now wanted by it, Iraqi and Iranian authorities, as is appropriate. Um, the contrast there only served to elevate the status of Hajj Qasim and Hajj Abdul Ali al Mahandas. If you go today from <coughs> Baghdad to Najaf, and I recently I was there, after Imam Hussein Soleimani Mahandas. Imam Hussein, Soleimani Bahandas, all the way down the road, all the way down the road. Of course, in South Beirut, it's the same. The airport road to Baghdad is Abu Mahdi al Mahandas Drive now. It's commemorated there. Uh, Caracas, Venezuela this year has a huge mural in the barrio of uh, January the 23rd, the most militant of the barrios in Caracas, Venezuela, a huge mural to Hajj Qasem Soleimani. Uh, I just wanted to say a couple of words more. Um, one, um, a personal <laughs> reflection about. <clears throat> Excuse my voice. I was in Derizur in Syria about a little over five years ago. Uh, at about the time that Hajj Qasim was in Derizur, driving out Daesh from Derizur city. And we were amongst the first group of foreigners that went in there. Daesh only held about 15% of the city at that stage. And I was investigating a massacre of Syrian soldiers that the Australian Air Force participated in with the US, pretending they were fighting Daesh. In actual fact, um, they were massacring Syrian soldiers to allow Daesh to take over the mountain behind Derizur airport. Well, the day we arrived, uh, the great Syrian general, Issam Zaradin, was killed by a mine on Sakharov in, in the Euphrates River. And Hajj Qasim himself, who had been there 
had gone down the river to Al Mayadeen, Al on the border, because his priority was to drive Daesh out of all of those cities and to take control of that border crossing. Because the, the main goal of US occupation in the region to this day is to divide the peoples of the resistance, to divide the nations of the resistance, which of course is a prime task against which our custom was working. And you notice that to this day, they have control of the Al Panth border crossing in the south. They have the control of the northeast to try and keep Iraq and Syria separated, and therefore Iran, Iraq, and Syria separated too. But that one border crossing, Abu Kamal, at where the Euphrates crosses the Iraq border, has been controlled by the resistance since Hajj Qasim went down there in October 2017. And they have held it ever since, despite many attacks there. There have been many attacks on the people there. The, uh, I won't go into the detail of it all, basically. But uh, uh, as a result of that, I was in Terry Zur. Uh, I didn't have the chance to meet either Hajj Qasim or, or Isam Zaruddin, but I met a very senior Syrian general, and he told this story. That was that they were still fighting Daesh in the desert areas of eastern Syria. And the Syrian Arab army would move around from time to time, but Daesh would sometimes have a very accurate ambush spot for them. And there was only one way in which the Daesh could have found out where the army units were, and that was by satellite intelligence. What he was saying was the US was giving satellite intelligence to Daesh, as they had in Iraq, as of course we know they evacuated their commanders with helicopters and so on. So I said to that general, you must feel like you're fighting a US command. He said, 100%. 100%. That's what we're all doing. That's what Hajj Qasim was doing. He was fighting a US command in the entire region, for the entire region. And he was the first of the regional commanders to demonstrate that we, you know after the murder, what happened, the, the, the strong uh, uh, sentence of the voice of resistance in the region said, now we want to expel this occupation from the entire region. The Iraqi factions came together Uniquely, they've been squabbling. They came together to demand the expulsion of the, the Americans. The Palestinian factions, who also have been squabbling, came together. So to me, Hajj Qasim always represent the unity of the resistance factions and the great unity which is needed to defeat the, the invaders. Thank you.